Oh my God, man. It is colder than a witch's titty out here, man. This is just freak weather. It's like November 12th and we're already getting like 20, 30 degree weather out here. And we just had a snowstorm, like a uh, foot of snow, like in Sanglin Shores. But um, the muskie, uh, me and Mike actually went out, did some fishing at Metro the other day. I uh, got a 41 inch muskie on the Strike King 8.0 Magnum. Um, I'll probably get to a video later with that, but uh, come to find out, I got tipped off by a musky buddy of my, mine, uh, Mark, that Gander Outdoors, Deja Vu, yet again, is closing, this time I think for good, you know, before it was Gander Mountain, and they got bought out for, uh, by, uh, I think it was Camping World or something, it doesn't really matter, it's just like every time you turn around, there's a new store closing, opening i know field and stream just got um bought out by sportsman's warehouse because actually went over there they used they're like the only local brick and mortar store that actually had those strike king 8.0s and i went over there and they stopped carrying them i was like oh my god pissed off but anyways they got to like up to 50 percent off um i think this is going to be the last time for gander outdoors to keep their doors open because there's just so much competition in the area especially after Cabela's opened up and I actually just talked to a manager there and Jimmy Morris they didn't know how I guess he didn't know how close Cabela's was to Lake St. Clair so they they might expand that there's talks of that because people are pissed off that you know we didn't get a, um, a restaurant there a fish tank and you know you would think that we would have got the dundee size cabals over there but anyways i'm you know getting off on a tangent uh i'm gonna get in here i think i want to see if I, they had those headbanger six inches i the nine inch and the 4.5 and i want to get that six inch to just complete my collection and uh musky mark that's what i'm calling musky mark i uh, he told me they got some uh musky reels on sale like the revo so maybe i'll check that out but anyways get your butt over here and check out see what they got see if you can get some deals on uh bass lures musky lures um you know if you're into walleye fishing or whatever you know they're having a pretty big disc on sale i'm gonna see what they got uh probably for musky I suppose we got 80% off marine and boating, 50% off entire store, 80% towables, water guns, firearms 25% off. Holy shit, is it cold out there? That Revo Toro's 50% off would be $100, I'd say, unless that's already marked down. Maybe I'll ask. Sir, <clears throat> how much is that Revo Toro S? Is that, is half off 200 or what are we looking at? the Revo Toro S, the um, Mosky Reel? Thank you, I appreciate it. Is that already marked down or is it half off 200? Oh, you're getting it half off of that. Oh, so 100, that's a pretty good price. Only problem is this is right hand, I'm left hand. <laughs> that sucks. Oh man. You are. What? You're, a le you're left handed, actually left handed. Well, I'm right handed, but when I'm fish, I'm left handed. I actually play hockey left handed. So I guess, you know. Same thing. Yeah, so it's weird. I, I mean, like, my most comfortable, I do spinning musky, but I've tried bait casters right hand, it just doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, I don't feel right casting, so what a, lot of, <laughs> yeah. what a lot of people don't because because of their their familiarity with spinning rails. Could be why. Is because of the majority of those. There was a time when you couldn't even hardly find a right hand unless you found one that was reversible. Yeah. A lot of times it was there wasn't much out there that was really yeah. made in a right hand. Right. A right -hand yeah, a lot of the spinning are reversible now, so that's what's nice. But the bait casters, so they have... now the. Some of the bait casters are, but yeah. I don't know if these, I don't think these are. Alrighty, well, I this appreciate it. This is a pretty decent musky reel. Yeah, I've heard. It is, but it is a right-hand takeoff. Right. Yeah, they're 
and what it is, I don't really need to. They just need to release that bail. Right. I mean, I cast, and then I'd be reeling. I got to pour hooks out with my left hand, so that's what's going to do me in. Because you got to change hands, I guess, when you're reeling. You know, you got to switch from right to left to reel it. So, and I'm, I just have a poor hook set with my left hand. But, all right, well, I appreciate it. I would prefer to pass. So, this big cone is 209 so you can get it for about $100. Can't beat that, man. Air casting's favorite scent, coffee. I have to tell AR about this. I don't even think he knows. Okay, coffee tubes. Not the ones I'm looking for though. 2.75. There's some 4.5s. What is that? Black Neon? a better color but I think I'll get those regardless that's air castings go to oh my god they got the 8.0 here no shit this is what we're crushing out on at Metro with musky but not this color particularly um, we we're getting the chartreuse perch. This is the sexy shed, but this will work. I don't know if I already ordered two up on eBay, so and they're already coming. They're on their way. A nude series, so you can actually paint your own crank. Oh wait, wait, wait. is this another? Oh, this is the 8.0 in the. Tennessee shag color. Oh shit. Oh my god, they got more colors here. Northern Mike, get your butt over here, man. Look at this. Uh, and they got the 4.0 too, man. That'd be perfect for smallmouth. Okay, so I'll bring it to the musculars. Okay, so here we are. Six inch phantom glide bait. Mayhem, that's a wicked looking color. Green, double cobra. Oh, there's the headbanger. And that looks like the nine though. 8.7, I wanted the six. But honestly, I wouldn't mind buying the paddle tail if I can get half off. That's a pretty wicked color. I might just get it, man. Cause it's, it's got like a corkscrew, so I can actually add different tails on that. Got Northern Mike on speed dial. I gotta tell him though about this. Hey, what's going on? What's up, player? Dude, I... I'm over at Gander Outdoors, dude. 50% off everything fishing. They actually have the 8.0s over here in four different colors. So when you get time, dude, get your butt over here and buy some shit because 50% off everything fishing. And they got 25% off firearms. Wow. They got a lot of stuff still left over. So. Is that the one right off 75? 59. Haul Road. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to get my ass over there. Then. Yeah. So I, I didn't know they still had a lot of stuff here, and I actually saw that uh, musky mark dude over here when I left. So I finally got his number. What a coincidence! Wow. Yeah. So how much are the 8.0s? Uh, tw uh, let's see. I got two of them. Thirteen dollars. So half off. You know, like six fifty. No shit. Oh my yeah. god. And they got. I, they got 50 or 25 percent off fish finders too i know you already got one i probably should get one but you know that's that's pretty cool man 
so I just thought I'd let you know I'm probably gonna buy a shitload of stuff you can't beat these prices so check this out man 50% off all these bucktail spinners they have a huge selection I haven't tried these airheads I actually read an article about the guy that makes those um, big tooth maps inhalers some musky mayhems I actually bought a couple of these small ones I want to try these for big pike on Kent Lake I think they'd work really well you know on those small inland lakes the fish tend to be a little pickier so using the bigger spinners aren't going to work but this is I think this is a good size spinner to catch like a 30 or 40 inch pike out there usually kills it. Silver and black looks pretty good too though. This looks pretty damn wicked with the willow bleed. I've never seen anything like that before. Some more I some spinner baits. There's a few more of those. That copper color. What is this color called? Knuckle brass, red, silver, copper tail. Those spinner baits are calling my name. Oh man, I don't know. Oh, what are these? I've never seen these before. Slither, 10 inch slither. It's like a giant swim bait. Pre rigged with giant hooks. Holy fuck, look at the size of the hooks on that thing. Unbelievable. Get a new spin cast for Lenny. Oh, that's a bow fishing reel. I'm sorry. That's pretty cool. Bow fishing, so that'd be $25. Oh, mend it. I need this. I need this. Sweet. They got mend it. Fucking glue. This stuff will save you on money. I should probably get two of them. Oh, they got a giant one? Or this is some other brand. Oh, this is just garlic scent. God, I think I'm gonna get two of these. So 14 bucks for two of them. God, I'm gonna blow up a hundred dollars. I know it. I'm gonna do it. Let's see if they got any. I don't think I've looked. See if they have any chatter baits. some of those Stray King Magnum 8.0s, maybe they'll get one or two of those, come out, spend $85, but hey man, I mean, it's worth it, you know, that was 160 worth of uh, fishing lures, especially musky, because, you know, a lot of this musky stuff you can't get cheap, um, you know, I read an article about it, these airheads, um, the guy that designs these, he's paired up with a company, I, I can't remember which company, it must be... I guess it's musky bacon, but he paired up with a company. They really liked it, the design of his lures. And so he actually paired up with this company to produce these. And they are very unique looking. I guess it's, you know, it's a hybrid uh, bait, basically a bucktail spinner that's got, you know, the tinsel, the soft plastic, and uh, number eight blades above. So yeah, I figured I'd give it a shot. You know, I like, really like the copper color, but that was originally like, you know, 20 bucks, got it for 10. You know, I don't have too many musky topwater lures, so, you know, I saw this big tooth buzz bait, and that looks pretty sweet. Look at the blade on that thing. 
I mean, I bet you that produces a lot of commotion in the water. And, you know, orange black goes pretty good for musky. Um, Could have got a lighter color, but, you know, got a really decent price on this one. And I got these cute little uh, mini bucktail spinners, you know, use a cute for musky tackle. You know, I don't know about that. But um, I'm actually not going to use these um, for musky, but pike instead. Um, you know, Kent Lake, they don't really se seem to respond to the bigger musky layers, but they really like inline spinners. And I thought, this is a little mini double-bladed bucktail spinner. I bet you this might produce like a 40 inch out of that lake because Mike has caught a 40 inch pike out of Kent Lake and you know they're a lot of fun to catch um so I bought two of these they're called the micro double cowgirl originally 10 bucks five dollars each uh got a silver and purple skirt and a green and green skirt so they look pretty cool man I can't wait to try to see like you know see what they look like in the water um, and of course, you know, I said I was going to get a six inch headbanger, but I didn't see if they had any of those and they definitely don't have the 4.5. Um, but I, I haven't bought one of these paddle tails yet in this size. What's cool is, you know, it's got a corkscrew back there, so you can actually add any type of tail you want to it. And I, you know, I love this copper color and I think this will work. And, you know, that's like, how much was the headbanger? These are fucking not cheap, man. I mean, originally they can go for like $25 to $30, and I got it for $14.50, so, you know, this is like a $30 lure, and <clears throat> some people, you know, probably not th think it's a little overrated, but I, I think the right lake, the right scenario, maybe the right weather conditions, I think the headbanger is going to produce, you know. There's, I've gone out there and tried it for a few days and never got anything on it other than like really big largemouth bass, but I think... You know, one day, you know, the musky, musky are going to respond to this lure because the action is just unique. You know, it never does the same thing twice. It's got a really cool erratic action to it. And, of course, these Strike King 8.0s. I swear to God, this, this giant bass lure, which, um, you know, it's a square bill. It, it, it's originally made by Kevin Van Dam and Strike Team for really big largemouth bass, but I bought it for actually musky because, um, you know, I bought the 10XD, which dives 10, 25 feet down deep near the channel, and I've gotten giant smallmouth, and I haven't used that lure as much as I want, but I thought that would work for uh, musky as well. But I was thinking, you know, maybe this will come in handy one of these times and guess what and i ended up do, doing just that and i find that it works really good when you're fishing from the shoreline and you just want to stay you know between you know two to four feet uh where it's real shallow at metro park and i swear to god i lost two giant musky last year on this um we had a hard time netting the one because we didn't have a long enough net and then i got another decent sized musk i think it was 35 inches but yesterday this fall we finally got out me and northern mike and i got a 41 inch musky on this and they didn't have the perch the chartreuse proof chartreuse perch color which i really like but you know what this is pretty close um i think it's just yeah black uh chartreuse and so i bought I think, well, I, I originally was going to buy three of these, but I got two more coming in the perch color, so I just bought two. And, you know, originally 13 bucks, you know, so about six fifty each. And, um, and, you know, I just, I hope they, you know, these, these lures, these unique lures like this, a lot of bass fishermen don't use giant crankbaits, so I could see striking discontinuing this lure one day. And so... I want to have a lot of backups just in case they do. And what I, I told Mike, wouldn't it be cool, you know, with these 3D printers coming out, if you could copy this lure and then fucking make it a size up even bigger for musky? I mean, just the square bill. And what's so unique about the square bill is, I mean, it gives a really wide wobble. And like I said, it stays in between the two to four feet range. So it's great for shore fishing for musky. And it almost so much vibration that it, it, it gives off in the water that um, it feels like a chatterbait. I mean, I love square bills. Mike turned me on to the 2.5 for bass fishing. And, 
after I saw how well it worked for smallmouth, I'm like, I saw this, I'm like, that looks like a musky bait. I'm um, a big fan of Berkeley Flicker Shed. I haven't tried these diggers yet, so I bought a few of these half off for originally seven bucks. And what sucks is they didn't have any chatterbaits. Unless I'm, I went over each aisle probably four or five times, just in case I didn't miss anything, because I went across aisle twice before, you know, the third time I actually saw this, the Mendic glue, and I'm like, oh my God, they actually have Mendic glue. This, is, this stuff is hard to find. Usually I had to buy it online and it's basically can extend the life of any soft plastic and i'm even talking the big rubber musky baits it's like the best investment you can buy um for your soft plastics bass musky and originally you know like it's 15 bucks and got it for like seven bucks so pretty sweet and then the yozuri knuckle bait have you guys ever heard of this never heard of these before i think i saw them in the store once and it looked a little cheesy but half off i said what the hell i like unique different looking layers i like trying shit out hence you know you've seen some of my layers and i like modifying stuff too but i thought why don't i try this i mean i looked at the reviews online i'll be honest with you from the store and uh, inside with you know my smartphone before i bought it but i like all right, this has got mostly positive reviews, so let me give it a try. But I wonder how how loud it, you know, it's it's got like a little ball and there's there's fucking um, like a bead inside. I wonder how how loud it is. It might be just the knock not might not be as loud as you think it is. You know, I'm sure it doesn't even compare to the chatterbait. But I thought, you know what, I like trying new stuff out, so. It says long cast, easy hookups, erratic action, and versatile. So, and spinner baits are very versatile, and that's basically the same shape. Coffee tubes. I think these are, no, I bought some other coffee, or a straight king coffee, but, you know, this is like air casting's go to bait for smallmouth. And no, they didn't have the goby. Um, and, you know, I had bought a glide bait last year and ended up taking it back because everyone swears by the Phantom with the tail. They make the best tails for the glide bait. So pick this up and uh, can't wait to try it out on musky. It's only the six inch. I wanted the eight or nine, I think it, but you know, that's all I had. So, and that's that goldish small, small mouth color. You know, I could see this flickering in the water driving the musky nuts and that is basically it folks so i spent 85 bucks including tax and all that crap and i i didn't i don't think i did too bad you know i could have went in there i actually put some of the stuff i'm like i, I want to get unique stuff i haven't tried before because they have so many different bucktail spinners spinner baits in there for musky i'm like dude i you know i make my own spinner baits why do i need all these different brands so i just want to buy stuff that's unique i haven't tried before and i got stock up on that 8.02 like i said just in case striking discontinues it because these some of the best layers always go discontinued man so anyways if you're looking to get some musky layers this fall try something out new you know think about heading over a gander of course you know i saw they had 25% uh, off for guns, ammo, um, you know, clothing, half off too. So they got some pretty good winter clothing in there, boots and all that. But I was mainly just looking at some bass stuff and mostly musky stuff. Some of the musky stuff I haven't tried yet. And it just, you know, when a store is going on in business, I can't resist. So, you know, I saved a lot of money. And guys should out over here and save some money too um you know i thought about making a fishing forum last year i never got around to it and i was kind of hesitant to do so i was running my, running my blog and all that and you know i run a lot of other sites too but i finally got around to it and i actually put my mind together and actually made a really nice clean template it's outdoorsy themed 
And what's nice about my forum is it's actually mobile friendly. So if you want to check this out, it's Michigan Forum. It's michiganfishingforum.com. Very simple to remember. Um, but what sets my forum apart from others is it's going to be geared towards help promoting fishing YouTube channels in Michigan. Um, of course, you know, my channel, Northern Mike's, AR Casting. I don't know if those guys are going to go on it. They can do what they like. But I'm going to help promote their channels too. And I'm the type of guy, I'm old school when it comes to the internet. I know social media has blowed up. Everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's on these Facebook groups. And I think that's what took a lot of, away from like the Lay St. Clair forums, which used to be very popular. You'd be able to go there and get fishing reports every day on Lay St. Clair. Things have changed so much on the internet lately. However, however, I still think forums might come back because, I mean, just I've been on Facebook and it just people are always at their necks, each other's necks. I think there needs to be some type of moderation in there. Someone to supervise the people, keep people from, you know, clawing at each other. And, and so I started up this fishing forum. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, I'm going to have fun on there. I know I always do. I, lo I enjoy writing articles giving tips and tricks, fishing reports, some of the lakes I fish, and I'll be there promoting some of my fishing videos as well. And what's nice about this software I'm using for the forum is it's Xenophoro, and it's actually mobile friendly. So you can use, you know, your smartphone, a tablet. It actually, very responsive template design, so you don't have to, you know, some of those other fishing forums around the web they use software that doesn't look too well and doesn't work too well um, uh, on your smartphones. So anyways, I also put a, you know, you'll be able to share your videos there. I actually have a gallery section to share pictures and videos too. But anyways, I enjoy writing articles. I really do. And I kind of lost touch with blogging. Um, I still own a lot of websites, but they're basically just selling affiliate products and that's basically it but I, I, I've always enjoyed fishing forums um, you know Facebook groups are great Instagram as well but I still go on like I think it's muskyoutdoors.com and you get so much valuable information there from just using the search box you're not going to find the amount of information there I just think the amount of information you can find on a fishing forum is so much more valuable uh, than versus a Facebook group. I mean, people review tackle there. They get more in depth. It just Facebook and all these social media sites. It's just like small sentences, small paragraphs at most. People write really in depth articles centered around centered around fishing tackle, gear, reels, rods, fishing wires. I mean, I still go on that muskyoutdoors.com and it's still hopping. Um, but you can still find a lot of great information from, you know, the archive posts just by using the search box. And you just don't have those capabilities with that Facebook social media site or those others. But, you know, teach your own whatever you like. But anyways, thanks for watching.